Hi, I'm Dr. Emily DeBoer. I'm a pediatric pulmonologist and associate professor of pediatrics at University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus and medical director of the Aerodigestive Program at Children's Hospital Colorado. I'm here to talk about respiratory complications and multidisciplinary care for kids with esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. Esophageal atresia, or EA, is a rare birth defect where a baby's esophagus is not fully formed and does not connect the mouth to the stomach like it's supposed to. A tracheoesophageal fistula, or TEF, is an abnormal connection between the esophagus and the trachea. A TEF often occurs in babies with EA, and so we refer to the condition as EATEF. There are different types of EATEF that are based on the shape of the esophagus, trachea, and the connecting TEF. EATEF is typically repaired shortly after birth. During the operation, a pediatric surgeon connects the two halves of the esophagus and removes the TEF if present. Although the esophagus and TEF are repaired, the tissue of the esophagus and the trachea are not normal and can cause long-term problems. After repair, children are at increased risk of GI problems including poor esophageal motility, esophageal stricture, food impaction, and reflux. Feeding and swallowing problems including oropharyngeal and esophageal dysphagia, and pulmonary problems including tracheomalacia, pneumonia, trouble with exercise, and bronchiectasis. After surgical and gastrointestinal guidelines were published regarding EATEF care, it became clear that some sort of consensus was needed to manage the respiratory complications of EATEF. Because there are not randomized clinical trials in this rare disease, the International Network of Esophageal Atresia, or INOEA, helped gather pulmonary experts in EATEF from around the world to describe the most significant respiratory complications and provide recommendations to guide management. Tracheomalacia at the site of the fistula and the distal trachea and bronchi is the primary abnormality that predisposes children with EATEF to respiratory complications. In kids with EATEF, tracheomalacia can be a combination of the posterior trachealis muscle being abnormally floppy and the anterior cartilage of the trachea being abnormally flat or compressed by a large blood vessel in the chest, often the innominate artery. This floppy and flattened airway limits airflow and mucus clearance. In infancy, the combination of swallowing problems and tracheomalacia puts kids at risk of cyanotic apneic spells or blue spells. Tracheomalacia also causes barky sounding cough, often referred to as tough cough or tef cough, in patients with TEF. In addition to the noise, tracheomalacia can make coughing less effective with trouble clearing secretions, so children with EATEF are more likely to get tracheitis, bronchitis, and pneumonia. Tracheomalacia can also cause wheezing. Some children with EATEF also have asthma, but often the wheezing is more related to air whistling through the malacic airway. Children and adults may develop trouble with exercise and chronic airway scarring called bronchiectasis. Swallowing problems and dysphagia associated with EATEF also predispose kids to bronchiectasis, and our goal with evaluation and treatment is to prevent the development of that bronchiectasis. Chronic wet cough or recurrent pneumonia should be investigated with airway endoscopy by pulmonary and ENT specialists and by a chest CT to evaluate for bronchiectasis. Because symptoms are so closely related to esophageal function, we often combine these scopes with a GI endoscopy, also known as triple endoscopy. The goal of tracheomalacia treatment is to get rid of the secretions that are making the child cough. This treatment can include albuterol, atrovent, or hypertonic saline to support airway clearance, chest physiotherapy to vibrate the secretions, steroids, and antibiotics. Severity of tracheomalacia is based on visual amount of collapse on endoscopy or on a chest trachea CT and by the amount of symptoms. Severe tracheomalacia can be treated surgically with tracheopexy, attaching the posterior trachealis to hold it more open, or aortopexy, moving the large blood vessels off the anterior trachea. To monitor and prevent long-term complications, we recommend annual lung function measurements, we also recommend chest and trachea CT intermittently based on symptoms and to monitor for bronchiectasis. 
This can be done here in our AeroDigestive program. AeroDigestive care includes a multidisciplinary group of providers, coordinators, and allied healthcare workers who coordinate an interdisciplinary diagnostic and therapeutic approach to improve health for kids with aerodigestive disease. Our program at Children's Hospital Colorado is one of the most complete multidisciplinary programs in the United States and includes pediatric specialists in anesthesiology, ENT, gastroenterology, pulmonology, feeding, swallowing, nutrition, nursing, and complex scheduling. In addition, we work closely with our pediatric surgery colleagues and other services as the need arises. We see children with multiple and interrelated congenital and or acquired conditions affecting airway, breathing, feeding, swallowing, and growth. We often see children with EATEF at about six months and 12 months of age to help guide feeding as infants are starting solids and changing from the bottle. We follow many kids with EATEF annually for long-term care. Our program is recognized as a leader in our field for clinical care as well as research and innovation. Our providers regularly present at the National Esophageal Atresia Conference and collaborate on international guidelines. We are one of only a few programs who perform awake transnasal esophagoscopy, or TNE, to evaluate esophagitis in children, and we collaborate with pediatric surgery on posterior tracheopexy for the surgical repair of severe tracheomalacia. Many children with EATEF will have GI, feeding, and respiratory symptoms after repair that can best be treated by a team of multidisciplinary specialists. However, some children will have few symptoms. Children with EA without TEF may be less likely to have respiratory symptoms, but more likely to have GI and feeding symptoms. In children without any symptoms, a single consultation with a multidisciplinary team may help determine if chest imaging or triple endoscopy is indicated to confirm there's no silent disease. Follow-up management can then be tailored to the individual patient based on symptoms or any abnormalities. We recommend a low threshold to use antibiotics for the bronchitis associated with tracheomalacia and bronchiectasis, both of which can be triggered by respiratory viral illness. Some kids do better with a steroid burst and we tailor the treatment to the individual child. We almost always recommend airway clearance with these medications. Regular health maintenance is very important, including flu shots, other vaccines, and monitoring of growth and feeding. GI guidelines for esophageal atresia recommend endoscopy upon transition to adult care. This is a good time for the AeroDigestive program to evaluate patients and equip them and their families with the information they need for success in adulthood. Referrals to our Aero program can be made just like other subspecialty referrals to Children's Hospital Colorado. Children with EATEF have multiple interrelated symptoms and we look forward to partnering with you to keep them healthy. For more information, please visit our website.